Amazing grace, how sweet, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once I once was lost, but Lord, oh, now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. I had a, a rough childhood. It came from my mother. I don't know why she, she, it was like she, she never cared that much about me. She called me all kind of names. Shoot! My, my mental illness actually started when I was a kid because when uh, I would play with my little toy soldiers or whatever, you know, our kids talked to them. Mine would actually talk back. They were my friends. I don't know. I just flipped down, I guess, when my daughter died. How did your daughter die? Leukemia. How old was she? Seven. Dutch Gaines withdrew when his daughter died, spending three and a half years trying to escape his personal pain. I go through there. A maze of trails through thick brush leads to his former home, just a cloth tent for shelter. And here it is. When they told me she was okay, I thought she was okay. I thought it was gonna fall in place. So there, I'll just take her home and have a smile like she normally does. She didn't. She didn't even come home. <laughs> in fact, in fact, from the hospital to the mortician to the graveyard. So, I've been down here ever since. the loss of a child, an abusive childhood, mental illness and addiction. This is Dave Council's room at McCreesh Place, an apartment building for formerly homeless disabled men. It's jammed with amplifiers and electric guitars his food's in a plastic storage bin on top of a small refrigerator. Asthma medicine's in a corner, his clothes in an open closet. There's a sink with shower, toilet, and kitchen facilities in the hall. To Dave, a veteran who suffered with addiction and other mental illness and even lived on the street, this eight by 10 foot room is close to heaven. Everybody's straight and sober because there's no drinking or nothing allowed. A safe haven. Where would you be and what would be happening to you if you didn't have an approach? Oh, I'd be out in the street somewhere. I wouldn't have anything. So uh, I'd be in bad shape if it wasn't for my crease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. There's a thread that you will see in the conversations with the gentleman here a thread of some type of traumatic loss. We have found in talking with gentlemen, some have had a trauma in their childhood. Uh, others that have had a trauma uh, in later life and it may have resulted in the decline in their functioning and being able to function in society. We understand in society when a tr trauma occurs, when it's something like a tsunami we have not grasped as a society when it is an individual who experiences the trauma and is alone in experiencing that trauma. I'm a teacher. I was a teacher. Uh, when I just started suffering from depression, uh, 
I was in a very dark place. Uh, to be very frank with you, I was suicidal. Uh, hospitalized many times. I, my wife divorced me while I was in the hospital. So I had to get out, so I literally was on the street. I just packed up my stuff and was on the street and I actually was staying in a car. The area I was in was just, I heard gunshots at night. There were drug dealers. Richard Harrison moved from the car to McCreesh Place. He's one of 64 rent-paying residents here, one of many living in recovery with a mental illness, but the only one with a master's in Shakespeare. Hi, good to see you again. All right. People shouldn't be afraid of what they don't understand. And I think that's what's so difficult about homelessness, um, is that you know, people make assumptions about how people ended up on the street, and they have no idea that every person out there has a story. <laughs> Here, where we have on-site NA meetings and AA meetings, it's very protective, um, and we want people to succeed. I think what makes McCreech different is that it provides a safe and sort of comforting environment for um, men who've had a really you know, spiraled down and have been trying for so long to find some stability, and I think here, it has a community atmosphere where everyone helps each other out, and you can get your equilibrium back. For you, is maybe having a bad day is that you really are almost antisocial. You, know, you want to stay alone. There needs to be more places like McCreech Place with permanent supportive housing, with supportive services as opposed to shelters. And we really try to look at each person as an individual and find out what their needs are and just wrap those support services around whatever individual needs they have. If you put someone who's moving out of a homeless situation into just a apartment complex with no support services, there's a really good likelihood that they are going to become homeless again. One of the things that I saw, I used to work at the Uptown Shelter um, for 11 years, and I was their pro program director there, and I would see a lot of individuals cycling in and out of homelessness. Here with the supports, it's we're trying to support them in their housing placement. We want them to stay here. I know it's hard sometimes to think that anyone will notice I know it can feel so alone I know there's times when you wonder whether you can make it through But I know you can if you try Bobby Livingston had been living at McCreesh Place one year when he met his future wife, Alice, at church. When I met him, he was so honest with me and he told me what he had been through. And I felt like, you know, some people won't tell you everything about them. And he, and he was straightforward with me from the start. Now Bobby is a certified peer counselor, giving back, and also volunteering at McCreesh. He's just amazed me so much as to what he's trying to accomplish, and um, he's doing it. He's really doing it, and I'm so proud of him. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Former resident Herbert Martin would tell you his life blossomed at McCreesh coming back almost every day now to tend the Rose Garden. I was on uh, alcohol and drugs real bad in you know, the shelter, and this thing really helped me, to, you know, get my life together again. And, and yeah, and, and you know, I appreciate it when they did and stuff. So, you know, I'm just giving back what they, what they gave me. <laughs> Giving back. It's a frequent theme here at McCreesh and the surrounding neighborhood of Villa Heights. They are great guys. They're not homeless. <laughs> they're living in a place and they're being a participating member of our society. You can't ask for something better than that. It's taking somebody off the street and giving them a place to live where they can be a productive person. Great guys. Productive citizens. Charlotte records show neighbors haven't called police about McCreesh since the doors opened. City staffer Pat Mumford says it's because residents are held accountable. If they're in there with drugs or drinking, they, they get booted out because there are more people that can use those services in that space. 
Uh, that's where apartment buildings don't have that. A lot of crime occurs in apartment buildings and those tenants stay. But this is a very well-run organization. Mumford says from the city standpoint, McCreesh makes economic sense. The apartments residents pay rent and there's always a waiting list to get in. Statistics show the chronically homeless in Charlotte have 584 hospitalizations in an average year at a cost of 1.2 million. And the homeless people with the most emergency room visits get a bill of $4.8 million over a year's time. A total of $6 million in Charlotte hospitals for about 800 chronically homeless people. They're going to either be at the jail, which is our largest homeless shelter that we have, or they're going to be in an emergency room, or they're going to be utilizing mental health services or some service that costs the taxpayer money. You know, I was on drugs and alcohol and, you know, I lost everything, my job, my place, and I was literally living outside at a park, you know, and because of that, I used to go to jail a lot because I didn't care about life. I didn't care about, you know, where I slept at or what I ate or if I took a bath or if I didn't, and I just didn't care. You know, I just, I was just out there. McCreese helps me in a lot of ways. It's not like just a, a, a place where you stay because, you know, we have staff here. And if we have any type of situations, you know, like just need somebody to talk to, they're here. I haven't made it into that. When you sit down and you look at the cost to our community for a population that is not properly served, it is immense. It is huge. And when you look at what we can do here for so much less money, our community ought to be proud of what McCreech Place is doing to uh, make good use of the resources that we have so that there are fewer interventions by police and the hospitals and other public services that are very expensive, incredibly expensive. McCreech's support will help Barry with his plans to move on. He just finished working the Quail Hollow Golf Tournament and is studying for his GED. He's found that with mental health services, he's able to keep a job for the first time. But some residents, like Richard, may stay. The ultimate goal is to keep the men from spiraling down to homelessness again. The bonus is taxpayer savings, but you can't put a price on a person's well-being. Well, good. I'm glad your recovery's going so good. Thank you. How long has it been? It's been, um, it's been like, it's been three years. But it's been two years. While we can prolong life and improve the quality of life, um, we can't prevent death for people who are so, so sick. And so I've had more experience with end of life issues for people and have uh, accompanied more people than I ever imagined I would in the six years I've been here um, to their death. It's, that's, that's an unfortunate thing, but it makes me all the more pleased and proud to be able to say they were able to be part of a community at the time that they had to die. And so that's, that's a huge gift, too. A man who once lived under a bridge spent his last days surrounded by the McCreesh community of people who care. Executive Director Pam Jeffson says McCreesh crosses society's barriers, mending relationships and self-esteem. What McCreesh does is just reach down and give them a hand up. Just give them that support that they need to do the kinds of things that we all want to do to be in community, to be productive members of society. McCreesh is transformative. Changed my life. McCreesh saved my life. Uh, I don't really think if, if I hadn't gotten here, I'd probably be dead today. It's, I am truly blessed to have this place in my life. Uh, it's, I, um, I grow every day that I'm here. I, I, I asked my mother, I said, uh, when they told me I couldn't teach anymore, um, what, what am I gonna do? And she said, looks like to me, you're right where you're supposed to be. Yeah, Recruce is a good place for people who don't have a home. Right, it keeps you out of jail and out of the hospital. If it wasn't for donations, we wouldn't have anything. If 
you want to help somebody or organization that really and truly works, Macretia is the place to do it. I once, I once was lost, but Lord, oh now, I'm found, was blind, but now I see.